Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a rainbow pixelated desktop wallpaper in Photoshop. Uh, first a couple of assumptions. I am using Photoshop CC 2015. If you're not using uh, Photoshop CC 2015 then some of the effects may not work as expected. Second assumption, I am working in Windows so if you're using a Mac whenever I say hit the control key I mean the command key on a Mac keyboard and when I say hit the alt key I mean the option key on a Mac keyboard. So without further ado let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is create a brand new document to work with. So hit control N on the keyboard to bring up your new document uh, window and we will then name this, uh, let's say uh, pixelated rainbow is good enough I think. I think that's good. Uh, and we are going to be using uh, my normal tutorial look which is 3840 pixels wide by 2160 pixels high resolution 150 RGB color 8-bit white background again never matters we're gonna be changing it Adobe RGB 1998 color profile square pixels so hit OK and we have our new image now the first thing we have to do with this new image is we need to change our background to an editable background. So you double click on it like I just did and then we're going to rename it. And we're going to rename this one Blur. And then we're just going to hit OK. Then what we're going to need to do is change our foreground and background to their default black and white by hitting the D on our keyboard. That will change it to default black and white. Then we are going to go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Now you can use a bunch of different filters. I've tried a bunch. Uh, but the thing that you need to do is either clouds or fibers. You can use either. I like the way the clouds look a little bit better, so we'll use clouds for this tutorial. But feel free to explore and try different things. So clouds we will use. There we go. The next thing that we have to do is adjust the levels of this to bring out the whites a little bit brighter and to make the darks, the blacks, a little deeper. So we're going to bring up our levels adjustment, not an adjustment layer. We're going to actually adjust the layer itself. So we're going to hit Control L on our keyboard to bring up the levels dialog box. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move the left and the right sliders, which represents the blacks and the whites, respectively. And we're going to bring them in to, uh, towards the center. So we're going to bring this into about 40-ish, let's say. And we'll bring in the whites to about 210, let's say. All right. That should do. Close enough for government work. Hit OK. And now our clouds look a lot brighter and darker at the same time. We've basically fixed the contrast. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the mosaic filter. So we're going to go up here to filter pixelate, mosaic, and you can use any cell size that you like. I'm going to use 80 because that gives me a perfect amount from left to right where I have full 80 by 80 square pixels, uh, I, I guess uh, mosaic squares on the left and the right so I don't have any half squares anywhere. So this I think is perfect for us and we will just hit OK. Now we're going to have to duplicate our blur layer twice over here on our layers palette. So we're going to hit Control J and then Control J again. That makes us three layers. We're going to name the middle layer into soft light. And we're going to name the top layer into outlines. So now we have three layers, blur on the bottom, then soft light, and then outlines. They're all the same thing. And now we're going to turn off outlines and soft light so that only blur is visible. Then we're going to uh, go to filter, blur, motion blur. Now this is going to get rid of the pixelation and it's going to give us a uh, uh, look that will make the spectrum that we're going to put on top of this a little bit more interesting than just a straight spectrum. So we're going to go to filter, blur, uh, motion blur going to make it 90 and we're going to make the distance 1000 pixels. Okay, you could do more or less, but if you go too much more, it just becomes a big blur of nothing and if you go less, you get a little bit too much movement, I feel. So I think 1000 gives you a, a nice difference between the two, 
without being too distracting in the final image. So we go with OK there. So now we've got blur on the bottom and we're going to create a new layer above this by hitting Control Shift Alt and the N on our keyboard to give us a new layer. And we're going to name this Spectrum because as I just foreshadowed we are going to put a spectrum up here and this is going to give our image the color that we want. Now you can use any colors that you want to make this uh, this rainbow effect, this pixelated rainbow effect. Uh, you can use even a monochromatic uh, gradient here. Uh, but what we're going to do for this tutorial is we're going to use a kind of spectrum gradient that I created. So we're going to go to G on our keyboard to bring up our gradient and this is the gradient that I created. Now I'm going from a deep blue to a red uh, I can give you the colors right here. The first color that I'm using is 125572 and that is at the location of 0 and then at the location of 25 percent I am using 2AA8DD and then at 50 percent I am using a purpley color which is 36378D and then at, you guessed it, 75 percent I am using kind of a fuchsia-ish pink which is C81D85 and then all the way at the end I am using red-ish color which is CA3132. So that's what I'm using. Now feel free to use any gradient that you like. Uh, it really doesn't matter as long as it's pleasing to your eye. So let's hit OK and we're going to make this gradient. I'm going to go from the blue on the bottom to red up on the top. So you make your gradient and you've got your little gradient there everything looks beautiful so we're going to now change our uh, spectrum to overlay is what we're going to do uh, so overlay and that gives us this effect now you could stop here if this is as good as you want it to be but I like it to look a little bit better than this so here's what we're going to do we're going to go to our s uh, spectrum and our blur and we're going to duplicate them by hitting now control J when we've got them both selected and then we're going to merge them by hitting control E and now we've got our spectrum copy here and we're going to name this mosaic and what we're going to do is we're going to go to filter pixelate mosaic and we're going to use the exact same cell size that we used earlier in my case that's 80 in your case it would be whatever number that you happen to have used. Then we're going to hit OK. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change this layer from uh, normal, we're going to change it over to darken. OK, the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to select the soft light layer, we're going to make it visible and we're going to change its layer uh, to soft light and you can see that we're getting a very nice pixelated look and effect here with our rainbow spectrum. Then we're going to go to our outlines layer and we're going to turn this into outlines by going to filter, stylize, find edges and now we have all of these little edges where all of our squares were. We're then going to change our outlines layer to multiply and now we've got outlines around everything. Now to give this a little bit more pop and wow, we're then going to give it a vignette and then we're going to uh, give it a little bit more of a curves adjustment to make the colors pop a little bit more. So above all of our current layers on our layer palette, we're going to create a brand new layer and we're going to, uh, actually we're not going to create a brand new layer, my mistake, what we're going to do is create a new adjustment layer and our adjustment layer is going to be a curves adjustment layer and just like in many of my other videos we're going to then lower the right hand side of the curves all the way down to this bottom line here this bottom black line not too low because it gets too dark so right about there is fine you can still see the edges of everything and then we're going to go to the layer mask you can click on it or you can click up here on the layer mask uh, and we're going to change the feather to 175. Exactly. Okay, then you can close that, that's fine. And then we're going to go to our 
elliptical marquee tool. We're going to make sure that our feather is zero. And then we're going to draw a very large ellipse that covers most of your image. And then by clicking in the center of this ellipse, you can then move it and we're going to center it both vertically and horizontally on the page. And then we're going to fill that with white by hitting Alt and Backspace. Then you can deselect by hitting Control D and you've got a nice soft vignette on your image. Then above this curve, well, we can rename this curve. Let's rename it Vignette because, again, I like to keep my layers palette nice and neat so I know exactly what I'm looking at every time. So then we're going to create a brand new curves adjustment. And we're going to name this one, um, let's name it Vibrance. Okay? And what we're going to do here is something very easy. See it says presets right here? We're going to change it from default down to medium contrast. And that gives us a nice little pop of vibrance. See, turn it off, turn it on. Things look a lot more vibrant. Now you can leave it at this. I happen to think that for a desktop wallpaper it's a little bit too bright. So I like to change the opacity of the vibrance layer down to 50%. And that gives it a little bit of a pop, but not too much. See, from that to that. Uh, and there, basically, we have everything that we need. Now, there's one last thing that I like to do, because, again, this is a desktop wallpaper, and you're going to be putting things on top of it. And sometimes these colors can be a little bit bright for your monitor. So I like to decrease the color intensity. Now, you don't have to do this, but if you wanted to, you want to go back down to your spectrum layer, and you want to change that opacity lower. So you're going to change the opacity of this down to about 75% and you've got yourself a very nice background. Let's make that 75 and there. So we went from 100% to 75 and it's a little bit less intense for a desktop wallpaper. And here we have our pixelated desktop wallpaper done in Photoshop. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a comment, like this, subscribe, because every Tuesday I'll be putting up a new tutorial. This is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.